Hello everybody, my name is Sophie and welcome back to another video. The t-shirt tells you everything you need to know about me if you're new. Yes, it's true. It's true. If you did not watch the end of my last video, which was my powerless review, then you're going to be really surprised right now. You're going to say, what the fuck is she doing? Why is she reviewing the second book? Go watch it again. I did read reckless it's the second book to the powerless trilogy i don't really think it has a name nobody really gives a fuck i have them both here omg this book almost 500 pages this one barely 400 and i still took forever to finish it lauren roberts if you are watching this right now click off I will get disrespectful. No, genuinely, you have to watch the first video, guys. I never review sequels. <laughs> Goes on my channel, I've reviewed like 10. In general, I will read the first book of a series. I will make a brave statement of disliking it. And then I won't continue on. That's how things work here on the Honestly Sophie channel. But again! Go watch the other video, the one I made before this, to find out why we're here today. Just kidding, I can just tell you, but still watch it, okay? I was just gone for so long, and then I didn't really know what to read next, and I do have my beautiful members that helped me pick my rates, but I wanted to just quickly get another review out without waiting for the votes, and so I was like, okay, this is fitting if I just read the sequel. And so I did, and I matched the cover, which is why we're red today. The only red eyeliner I could find in the entirety of Germany was in H&M. H&M red eyeliner. I'm scared I'm gonna get an infection. My review on Goodreads for this book is a spoiler. I did not mark it as a spoiler because I do not give anyone the grace of... You need to know it, okay? We'll talk about it when I get to it, but that's why I'm not really like telling you right now. But if you watched the last video, if you remember from that which line I got the biggest ick from, then you know the last line of this book. Yes, you do. Guess right now. If you didn't see my review, guess right now. Guess! I don't know why I feel so angry, guys. I don't know what's taking- the, the spirit of Lauren Roberts is taking me over. I don't know if she's angry. Actually, I do know that she's not angry because I watched way too many videos of her. I want to thank my members for um, loving me. My members get my videos a day early. They also usually get to vote on my next read. They get to vote on the series review that I'm gonna do over the summer. I want to read an entire series and review it in one big long video. And they also get to decide on that. They also get exclusive content like my Ruby Red movie commentary. They also get my internal peace and love. They're just the best. They're my book haters. They're officially part of the book hater club, which is my club. And if you want to join, you can become a member. And if you don't want to join, that's fine. We don't have to. I did get a new member. The book haters, they are growing. We are becoming an army. Be scary. Double D. Just like me. Double D, I know nothing about you except that I love you and you have a really cute cat as a profile picture. And I do love cats. Back to Reckless. Since I talked so much, or I already gave an intro to the author in my Powerless review, I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet here. There are timestamps if you don't want to hear about it. You just want to hear the rant, you can skip forward. I don't know how fun it's going to be because genuinely, if you want to know the vibe of this book, or if you're still deciding, if you're still watching and you haven't read the book and you're like, oh, maybe I'm going to read... Don't. Save your time and save your money. Or maybe just your time. I'm not insinuating anything. It's such a waste of time. And so many people who I saw that enjoyed the first book and were so excited for a second one didn't like this one and it's a absolute filler book nothing happens in it even the romance which was the main focus of this book um that people loved so much in the first one just completely fell flat we'll talk more about it but if you are still deciding don't read it and usually i say read it for yourself and make up your own opinion like i'm not here to tell you to read it or not Except for some books, like Honey, don't read that. Only read it. Oh my god, guys, I have terrible news. I'm gonna talk about it in my podcast because by then the announcement will be out. But my arch nemesis, Alex Astor, she's publishing a new book. She put it on her TikTok. I didn't even want to mention it here, but now I just thought of her. I have to say it. She said, Announcement coming tomorrow. I wrote a new book and I don't think she means the third book in the Light Lark um, trilogy. She means like a completely new series. 
I couldn't stop her. I'm so sorry. I'm her number one hater. So I will talk. I have a lot to talk about in my next podcast episode. I hope everybody tunes in. Subscribe. Some things that I do want to mention is she did announce the third book in this series. It's called Fearless. I think I mentioned that in the last video though. I think the news were already out. The cat was out the bag. And for some reason, and since I am evidently not American, I don't know why this is, every fuck ass author that I have beef with always goes on Good Morning America. What the fuck is going on in America in the morning? What? Why are we all on Good Morning America? Sleep in. Lauren Roberts was also on Good Morning America and there is literally a three minute clip online that you can watch and I watched it, of course. I need to know everything. And she just said, I have a big announcement. The next book is called Fearless. And then they were like, there's two ladies that don't give a fuck. They were like, oh my god, that's so cool. Hopefully we'll see it on the screen soon. Who's hoping that? Then she did some midnight releases. And that just reminded me of, I talked about someone that I cannot mention by name um, in my last podcast episode that I did. And I remember that person <laughs> saying that they thought... Oh my god, this is such a dumb statement. I didn't even mention it in the podcast because I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm, I don't have to mention every single thing, but I, it just made me think of this right now. There was a midnight release party for Reckless. And I think that midnight release parties were not a thing for a while, but they're coming up again with really popular series. I've seen it for a lot of books, like... Sarah J Maas all the time. I'm sure Colleen Hoover gets them too. Like every- okay, everyone gets them. <laughs> Everybody gets it. But this person- I was talking about it in my podcast. I remember them saying like that they thought that Fourth Wing was gonna be the new Harry Potter. First of all, okay. Because there was a midnight release party for Fourth Wing in like New York or something. I don't know. And then that person was like, I haven't seen midnight release parties for books since Harry Potter and they're doing it for fourth wing. This is like the next Harry Potter and it just made me sit back and be like, I literally saw someone attend a midnight release party for a book last week. What are we doing? Why are we lying? Anyway, she did that. She did a bunch of Q and A's and I did watch them. I just really want to know how this happened because I, of course I have a reason. This book was arguably worse than the first one. Not in the sense that she copied everything, we'll get to it, from different books, but because the writing was so stale. She now had a whole team behind her, working with her, proper editors and agents and whatever the fuck, whoever joins you when you work with a publisher. And she still managed to write like ass. Nobody felt the need to fix anything. What? Why? Why would we give her a team if no one's gonna help her? <laughs> help that poor lady! And in those Q&As, people were asking her the same questions over and over again, which, first of all, embarrassing. People kept asking her because there's two dudes in this book. They're like, Kid or Kai? I mean, I'm on the second book. You guys know. I don't have to explain the backstory. <laughs> you know the characters, I hope. They were asking her, who do you prefer, Kid or Kai? What kind of question is that? What, what do you think she's gonna say? And she gave the same answer over and over again. I saw like three different videos from three different Q&As. And I have to say, the vibe that she gave, because at some point she was also like, oh, I have another I idea for duology after I finish this. Um, because duologies are my favorites. This should have been a duology too, by the way. Three books, too many for you to write. Arguably one is already too much. There were so many people at this release, by the way. Uh, people would film it like at her at the front and they would pan back. It was just hundreds of people there. What are we doing? Why are we there? What are we hoping to know? But there wasn't really any new information that I could gather from those clips. The main reason I went and watched them is because somebody made an accusation in my comments. You know who you are. It was claimed in my comments that Lauren Roberts at one point said in an interview or something that she didn't really know why she ended the book the way she did because she was just hoping to figure it out when she was writing the next book. And it's something like, this is allegedly, right? Allegedly she said this. I believe it because I already said that in my first review that that was the vibe I was getting. She was just kind of writing and hoping she would figure it out. But I couldn't find where she said this or if she said this. I believe it. 
because I already made that statement yet again. I'm gonna reiterate. I don't have any rings on, by the way. Oh my god, I'm naked. Uh, I don't really know what I was saying. Should we talk about the book now? I don't really know what else to say. We'll figure it out as I go. Um, by the way, you can... No, actually, I'm gonna tell you. People <laughs> said that this book reminded them of Dance of Thieves. If you remember from the first review, the book was very much similar to Hunger Games and especially to Red Queen. And so I haven't read Dance of Thieves. I do have it on my shelf. Should I read it? Should I read it? I've never, I never read a Marie E. Pearson book. The one that was popular when I was younger was Kiss of Deception that she wrote. I don't know if people fuck with that now. I know Lauren Roberts has said that Dance of Thieves is her favorite book. And she always recommends it. And so people said for this book that this was just Dance of Thieves rewritten. I can't judge it. You will have to tell me if you've read it. Let's get into it. Yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo. I'm so excited to yap, but I'm really sweaty. So don't hope for too much. Okay, let's go. We start off the book, I think, like, two days later? <laughs> two days or three days after Peyton, as remember, killed the king and then escaped. And now her wannabe prince boyfriend is the president of the cops and... His brother is the king, and his brother said, go get Peyton, because she killed the old king. And then he's like, yeah, I'll do that. So that's what we're doing. That's the whole plot of the book, by the way. That's all we're doing in this entire book. There's nothing else. So, thanks for watching. I shake my head, trying to shake the memory. I shake my head, trying to shake the memory. Shake twice in one sentence already leave this is what i mean like if i were an editor i would tell you to maybe use different words <laughs> just a different word maybe i mean there's many words for shake you could just google shake uh synonym <laughs> they cannot figure out how to kill each other or get each other him the president of the cops and Peyton because they obviously have a crush on each other they have a huge big fat crush i still don't know how old he's supposed to be she mentioned she's 17 I don't know how old he is. I'm guessing like 19. That's usually the age difference they go for. He has a big fat voluptuous crush on her and so they do like run away from one another. They see each other, they run away. One of them almost gets caught, the other one almost gets caught, but they can never go through with actually killing the other one. But all of this emotion it doesn't really come across. None of the emotion really comes across in this book at all. None. I can't just think of a single one. Her sentence structure is completely ass and I just will read out a little a paragraph for you guys so you can get a feel if you haven't read the book and you're just here for the hate and for the talking. It's a little small, I know. It's come up my double Ds. I'm shocked he can't hear my pounding heart, feel my burning gaze as it trails over him. I shift my stomach sliding across the roof as I peek over the edge. Pain sears down my leg, drawing my attention to the grudely bandaged slice on my thigh. I bite my tongue, holding in- I should read it out differently, wait. I shift, comma, my stomach sliding across the roof as I peek over the edge. Pain sears down my leg, comma, drawing my attention to the crudely bandaged slice on my thigh. I bite my tongue, comma, holding in a cry along with a string of colorful curse words. Girl, can you use and at one point, please? Just one time. I swallow, comma, suddenly feeling sick at the thought. I raise my arm, comma, fingers trembling around the knife. At least she only used dagger 40 times in this book. Honestly, I don't know if anyone else is bothered by this. I am not a linguini. I don't know anything about language. I, oh, I have no credentials when it comes to grammar or critiquing writing. It's just the vibes that I can critique and the vibes are not good. <laughs> They're not good. It just reads weirdly and the whole book reads like this. And also, yet again, both of their perspectives because we get dual po we get triple pov actually but for the dual pov of her and kai it reads the exact same way i genuinely sometimes yes i mentioned it before i do stop reading mid chapter i just wouldn't know whose pov i was in i would have to go back and check and then we get kit's pov also because he's left behind in the castle we get like three chapters of his and you can really tell that she's trying to make him sound different because maybe she saw the criticism because allegedly she reads reviews which don't watch this one i've said it if you're still watching lauren get off it just doesn't work because everybody else talks the same sounds the same you have two povs that sound the same and so the difference is too stark 
um, to his POV. It's too try hard. I think um, with a lot of lines in this book, you could argue that they were really. Sorry, I'm stuck to the chair. It's really nasty. She was really trying hard to make it sound quotable, where she would use big words occasionally to make something sound more. Um, how do you say, like, more sophisticated, more eloquent, but it just didn't work in the context of the book because nobody else ever spoke like that, and no, she wouldn't use those words, watchable words, continuously. She would just sometimes throw them in there whenever she, whenever they were, like, making out. She was like, I can't think of an example. I'll tell you when we get there. She now, meaning Peyton, decides that she has to get out of the city because they are looking for her. So she wants to cross the desert, the mythical desert from the first book, to get into a different city. Not country, just a city. This march takes multiple days. How many? I think she does mention it, but I forgot. I don't really care that much. While she makes this treacherous trip across the desert, she does come across a guard. Whoever the fuck that was, I don't remember if it was a guard from Kai or the other city. It was just a random dude. She's been in the city or in the desert for like four days at this point, running low on water. We get her perspective where she's like hallucinating and she's like going a little bit insane. Uh, because she's just dehydrated and not eating anything. This dude comes across her and she kills him no problem. What? That's already... This is like in the beginning of the book. And it starts out just like, like right where we left it. Especially because most of this book is spent... Well, not most of this book. This entire book is spent in a city where nobody has powers. So... They're not using any power, so where, what are we doing fantasy-wise right here? Nothing. Because nobody is using any magical powers. So does it matter that people have magical powers? No. She kills the dude, no problem. After, yet again, this dude was not dehydrated or anything as far as I'm concerned. Also, it was a man. <laughs> you know, a soldier, a trained soldier, and she's just a random girly pop from the street. And at this point, you can also not use the excuse of like, oh, maybe he underestimated her. She killed the king. You know, people know that she's wanted and that she's capable, so fuck off. <laughs> she eventually makes it to a door. <laughs> I don't know how she wants me to pronounce that. And they all live happily ever after in door. They don't. She's wanted. There's posters of her being wanted. And Kai is also not wanted, but he's also there. He does make it across the desert. Everybody makes it across. I'm so happy. This line is, they are supposed to hate each other, her and Kai. Kai, as we found out, killed her dad, which is why she hates him. And she killed the king, which is why, well, Kai's dad. And then he hates her, supposedly. They just stayed in each other's POVs. I'm supposed to hate him. I'm supposed to hate her. But I can't. And you're like, they don't. There was just no build up. I, she, you could tell, I think, what she was trying to do and what she wanted to get across, but she just does not have the skill set to deliver. It's not reaching the reader. Rita. <laughs> the moonlight feels warm here. Has moonlight ever given off any type of heat? Or like... I don't feel cold when I'm in the moonlight. Dancing in the moonlight. Tonight is warmer than most, leaving me sticky. Sh fuck off. The... I'm gonna look it up. I do also have the ebook. Double support! For all the hate, you know? <laughs> sticky. The, the word sticky was used one too many times. 26. 26 is too much. <laughs> 26 is too much. <laughs> I'm going crazy. After arriving in this uh, city across the desert, she needs money. And oh my god, okay. I also have to look up how many times bread was mentioned because literally the only thing they ever ate in this entire book was bread. Oh, I typed breast. <laughs> 22. Also too many times. The only food anybody in this book ever eats is bread. And the thing is, usually that's not something you would point out. Like, okay, yeah, they eat bread. Obviously, if they're like in a dungeon, they get bread or whatever. But the amount of times it's mentioned, it, be it becomes... You become aware of it. You become too aware of it. And then when you read the line bread again, you're like, oh my god, fuck off. Can they eat like some soup? Whenever they would eat anything, it was bread. Specifically mentioned, it was stale bread. Can you think of anything else? Anyway, she needs money, and instead of just continuously stealing from these people, she decides, I'm gonna fight <laughs> in an underground ring. <laughs> the most logical thing that she can think of, Mrs. Payton is, or Mrs. Lauren Roberts, honestly, like, we can't blame it on the character. I'm gonna fight in an underground ring, and I'm just gonna 
tie a scarf very tightly around my head because everybody knows my hair color, which is silver, um, and then nobody's gonna recognize me. Peace and love just dye it. I mean, like, what are we doing? Why is that not something that crosses her mind? Also just to hide from the dude that's hunting you. It's the most obvious solution to this issue of her hair. Because I believe that if she dyed her hair, she would immediately become like unrecognizable to most people. Then you could have like a scene where Kai fights her, or not fights, maybe also fights, but finds her and he's like, I know that posture or I know that walk, I would recognize her anywhere even with black hair or something like that. Could make a cute scene out of that, but it doesn't even get explained away. There is no reason given why she doesn't dye her hair, why it, like it doesn't cross her mind at all. And with issues like this, you need to address them in your book if you don't want me to make fun of them. Because what the fuck do you mean? Obviously she is the best fighter ever and she beats everyone's ass and then... Kai finds her in the underground ring because before that he <laughs> luckily guys luckily he met the girl he almost indirectly killed in the first book when he sent her out to the desert with her family to fucking die in the desert because he didn't want to kill her directly that girl is alive in the streets and he meets that girl only in this beginning part never mentioned again that's not true one time it's mentioned again then never again this little girl and she takes him to the underground ring that being said the mentioning of characters I have to take a breath. The characters from the first book are not mentioned in this book. The ones that were part of the trial... You know what? Fuck them. She also at some point tries to run the route of Payton has PTSD because she watched Adina, her ex-best friend, because she's dead, that's why it's her ex-best friend, die in her arms. That's why she can't see blood anymore or something like that. Her kill count is going up in this book. Her KDA is pretty good. But you cannot go into that route and not have her reflect on the lives she took in the first book or the lives that she witnessed being taken in the first book during the trials because arguably that's supposed to be like a traumatic event no like you watch people die and stuff like that and you were killed almost multiple times and I, edina ugh, should we see how many times i love ebooks that you can just search up words it makes my life so much easier but let's see how often times edina was mentioned 20 Oh my god, she was less. <laughs> she was mentioned less time than bread. Cut the cameras. Lauren Roberts, peace and love. She wants to write about two people, two hot people fucking. And there's no shame in that. But not even the romance was good. Then you can try to sell me something that's like more emotional. You know what I mean? She's trying to to go into a certain route and it just doesn't work because she doesn't have the Je ne sais quoi? I don't know why English people always say je ne sais quoi. What are we doing? Use your own oh, use your own language. Okay. Then reden wir jetzt Deutsch. Bitchy Blair, who was supposed to be a vocal point, as you remember, the bitch character from the first book, the antagonist, which by the way, there is like no antagonist in this book. There's nothing in this book. It's just them vibing in the desert. Okay, wait, back to the story. She fights in the underground ring. Kai finds her. Where are his men? Where are his men? Hello? Guys? Nobody is there with him. Like, they, he came there with him. But then once he enters the city and he fights... What's her name? Peyton. He just doesn't remember them. He's like, I have men stationed outside. He doesn't. <laughs> I, or if he does, like, he's lying. I don't know. He's lying to us, the reader. Oh, 100 pages in, they kiss for the first time. And yet again, I have to reiterate... The romance was such a big point of the first book. People were fucking with that hard. They wanted them to make out so bad because they didn't kiss in the first book. And then they kiss 100 pages into this book after supposedly like hating each other. They kiss on the roof of the rink, of the underground ring. So they have to go up like multiple stories, right? They're like, oh my god, uh, kill me. No, I can't kill you. Um, I love you. And then it goes like this. Her face angles up her face angles up towards mine, our no nose is brushing. She never lowers her dagger. And the point of her blade still draws blood from my throat. Prove it, I repeat, voice quiet. Hate me enough to make me want you. I cup her jaw, feeling her eyes burning into mine. Ruin me. Our mouths crash together. 
and can taste the loathing on her lips, the anger in each swipe of her tongue. She spells out a promise, leaving it linger to linger on my lips. Whenever they're making out, she tries to get sophisticated because she knows it's quotable, but it's not working for you, Lauren Poppy. Lauren Robbie Bobby, as I called you in the first video. You lost the privilege. <laughs> I'm calling you by your full legal name now. The kiss is deep and anything but tender. It is betrayal. It is bitterness and nothing has ever tasted so sweet. It is ruin. They fight in the ring and uh, they both expose each other. He pulls off her scarf and she pushes down his bandana. I don't know where he got the bandana from. I don't really fuck with men with bandanas, I'm sorry. Now they have to hang out, forcibly, because they both exposed each other. And people also want to hand in Kai, because they think that if they hand in Kai, they'll get money. Where do they want to hand him into? Their own police uh, president or who? I forgot. You tell me. <laughs> I don't remember. But they both escape. And now, from this point onward, the worst part of the book begins which is the entire book like 100 pages into this like everything after the 100 pages just it stalls it's stale like the bread they're eating you can sum up the rest of the plot very shortly it's just them together trying to escape each other or other people that attack them like when other people attack them they escape together but once it's just the two of them they try to escape from well she tries to escape from him it's the same thing over and over again. They have the same conversations over and over again. Absolute filler. You could have done those 100 pages or 200 pages maybe and then written a completely different plot line. And that would have worked better because this is just filler. This is just a filler book. And people are like trying to justify it saying, oh, it's because it's because they want to... Um, build she wants to build out the relationship between them like showing that they don't hate each other but she could have done it in 200 pages slash look at echo oh no i'm so sorry i have to mention it. look at echo Muff. you know i was a hardcore stan when i was 14 and reading it for the first time i've redeemed myself don't come for me that book is an enemies to lovers where they hate each other or you know and then they end up together and there was still plot happening yeah do I have to say it again? There was still plot happening. While Lauren was advertising this book, she was also talking about um, proximity the whole time. She would say, oh, the next book has a lot of proximity. <laughs> like, she would keep saying that instead of forced proximity. Like, okay, proximity. What are they doing? They're staying in an inn together. And there's only one bed. But he sleeps on the floor. And she sleeps in the bed. So don't get excited. They don't do it. <laughs> the reaction when she told people that there was not going to be smut in this series because it is YA and it was if they do it in the third book it's gonna be fade to black you could just hear everyone go ugh they wanted to get up they wanted to be like boo <laughs> boo you people are sick you're sick okay then after this scene sorry I have to get a little comfy you guys I was at work this morning <sighs> I have to get up at 5am for work so don't don't come for me I just have to get a little comfy Bye. Sometimes, starting now, we get Kit's POV. As we remember, Kit is now king. And Kit is a very uh, curious character because she does not know what to do with his character as she does with any of the other side characters. She only knows that she wants Peyton and Kai to fuck. And not on page, off page. Like, she's imagining it in her head, but you're not going to see it. She does not know what else is going on. She knows where she wants these two people to end up, which is together, married on the throne or something. But she doesn't know what to do with the other characters. And she also doesn't really give a fuck about them. Peace and love, allegedly. That's my opinion. So when we get Kit's POV, it's just him being sad and alone in the castle because he doesn't have any friends he she wants us to believe that the death of his father the king has made him go insane because of his new burden of being the king that he doesn't know how to navigate this and that he's also grieving his dad but i don't know what their relationship was like so why the fuck would i care we never saw kai no what's his name kid and the king really do anything in the first book we could we, she would tell us she would tell us you know she never showed anything in the first book she would tell us about it but i don't know so when she when he's like oh my dad did this and this and he wanted this and this from me i don't believe it you know i'm so over it telling not showing Ugh. am i too angry guys i don't know it's like i did have some really fuck ass customers today maybe i'm just like trying to channel that anger right now <laughs> so he's supposed to be the crazy king He's going insane, alone, griefing, and I just don't care about him, and nobody does for that fact of the matter. <laughs> 158 pages into the second book, we get an info dump. 
this is the one instance where I believe that the people at Simon & Schuster, which yet again, those initials, I would overthink them. I know what I'm talking about. I'm German. I think they told her, girly pop, you never explained anything that was like ground laying, world building. In the first book, you have to tell it now. And there are so many ways, not that I know any of them, but there are so many ways you can give us information about the world that the characters live in without them having a conversation with each other. And the fact that she decided the best way to tell us this information was by having Peyton and Kai talk to each other. Two people who have lived in this world all their lives who know about this all of their lives and you're trying to tell me they're having a net it's like if i was talking to my boyfriend about like the history of germany we just sat down and we're like oh my god let's discuss <laughs> weimarer republic <laughs> let's discuss of course i'll share it with you guys so you can make up your own mind but what she explains is the the plague and that's also a very very interesting topic that i will scream about later Ugh, i'm so angry i love talking what, you want me to teach you of Ilya's history? I want to make sure you know what you're talking about, so go on. This is ridiculous, she huffs. It's beginning to sound as though you don't know. And then she goes, Ilya was a weak kingdom. <laughs> oh my god, you remember the German inflation, 1923? Ugh, we were so weak economically. We always have been, even before the plague swept through. And also, by the way, side fact. I feel so dumb reading this book. I don't know if Lauren Roberts thinks I'm a fucking dummy. I almost have a degree. <laughs> I almost have a degree. Almost. Her not naming the things anything. I hate when fantasies do that. But why are we, like, even if this is YA and this is like target audience 14 years old, which I don't, you know, <laughs> you can give plagues a name and you can give groups of people a name. It's like when in Lightlock, my arch nemesis Alex Asta named uh, the teleportation device the star stick. What the fuck do you mean? Just come up with a keyboard smash word. Nobody cares. But anything is better than star stick. Her calling it the plague. Even in our world, every plague had a name. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like why would people not understand what you mean? Or like the elites just being called elites and not having a term for them. The ordinaries just being called ordinaries. It's so on the nose. It makes me feel like a fucking dummy when I'm reading it. And that's not what I am. I stand up for what's right. Back to the info dump. Um, being conquered was a constant fear for past kings. And when the plague killed nearly half the population... Do you guys think it's an ick when people read like this? Because I do. The kingdom was quarantined, isolated, and more vulnerable than ever. So when the elites were born from the plague, the kingdom rejoiced at the power they suddenly had over everyone else. Satisfied? Hardly, I smile. Continue, because we haven't had enough. It's This is like three pages. Ilya has remained isolated ever since in order to ensure we are the only kingdom with elites. And then after 70 years, your father decided to banish all the ordinary so he could have his elite society. Doesn't make any sense. You are missing some very key points, Gray, I interject. Right. The disease the healers discovered we ordinaries possess. The one that will eventually weaken the elite's powers. And, I prod. And the fact that ordinaries and elites procreating will eventually cause the elite race to go extinct. No! I'm scared for them! Anyway, I still don't know what the disease is, guys. I'm very confused on this. They are apparently aware that if someone without powers has a kid with someone with powers, that the powers will dwindle. Which... That's just biology, babes. I don't really, like, okay. So they don't want that. But then, I thought that was, like, meant as the disease. Right? I don't know what the disease is. I don't think she does either. Because I don't understand. They keep saying, oh, the disease makes it so that the elites are weaker and the elites don't want to be weak. So we have to keep the ordinaries away so they don't get sick. Yeah. There's nothing I can tell you about this disease other than the fact that at the end of the book it's revealed that there is no disease. But this, first of all, we've been new. Second of all, what is the disease supposed to be? Love info dumps though. I love it when people just put information on the page and I don't have to use a single lure brain cell. Then, another big reveal. God exists. Listen, you can put religion in your book, but then at least do it also in the first book. And also, 
I don't think it works actually. When you decide to put things like that into your book, it just immediately takes out the uh, fantastical aspect for me. Why would they just believe in the same god as we do? Or when they start putting when they start putting weekdays, when they're like, oh, it's Monday, it's like. Monday. There's a bunch of things like that and I'm pretty sure there's like a whole list somewhere that I saw once of people um, How they were bothered by those things in fantasy books because that makes them not fantastical that makes them just our world basically but people just put it in because they are not aware of that. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe elites weren't meant to be? That what the plague gifted Ilya with is unnatural. I stiffen at her words but she pushes on. Humans aren't meant to play God. Is she like insinuating that God gave them powers like our God like Moses is going to come and uh, in the next book is this like a biblical retelling are we what are we doing I'm unsure but it also kind of nullifies them thanking the plague continuously why would the elites keep saying thank the plague instead of thank God is the plague their God I don't want to get theological. Lauren Roberts does thank God herself in the acknowledgements. And she does mention God a second time in this book. And I think it's... What's his name? Kai <laughs> mentioning him. But he also keeps thanking the plague. But that would then be blasphemous. Hmm. She gets caught, then he gets caught. By rebels with mutated powers. Very randomly... We get the reveal that in the city there's a bunch of people with dulled powers. Like we get the confirmation that people have reproduced ordinaries and elites and that the offspring is also with power but just with less power, with weaker powers. Okay, like I don't really know how this is a big reveal. Because they get to like some kind of sanctuary where they're all hanging out and then Kai's like, oh my god, mixers. They're called mixers. Also, I want to say something. There is a character called Callum, and this I could be wrong about this, right? But if someone's watching who has read the book, please let me know. I haven't seen anyone else say this, so I might be a little bit confused, but in the first book, there was a dude called Callum, and he was the leader of the Resistance. And in the second book, he's advising Kit. Callum was the one in the first book that stood in the arena and like you know tried to talk to the king you know their big grand plan of the resistance and then in this book it's mentioned that callum comes into the door to talk to kid and i just don't know if this is like a mistake or if this is like um supposed to be like on purpose but then it's not explained i'm just really confused was he like a double agent is that what we're going for i'm not getting it because it's not explained i'm just dumb Maybe I am too dumb for this book. Maybe it's good that she doesn't give anything a name. Then they both get caught by somebody who wants to sell them, but they escape. And that's when, after that chapter, Callum comes in and I'm like confused. And that's when we get the reveal because you've been wondering why it says big booty bitches in the back. Callum comes in and he tells Kit that he needs to be, like he needs to get his shit together first of all, and that he needs to remember the f three Bs, which, is again confusing because like who is this dude <laughs> i'm not sure what she was trying to do with the three b's but callum is like you have to live life by the three b's now in the book i'm looking i don't remember what the three b's were let me see bravery benevolence and brutality makes a good king those are the three b's he gets reminded of these three b's while being slit a box a, cl a, a kleiner tiny small box every time his pov comes on now this small box is mentioned and it's very like obvious that this is supposed to be an engagement ring box because at the end of the book kid proposes to Peyton. he forces her to marry him that's like the big uh cliffhanger now i don't really fuck with those three b's when i think of big threes i think of big booty bitches what makes a good king having big booty bitches in the kingdom Including me. Big booty bitches. Brutality, benevolence. I forgot the first one. That also just feels like a scene or any scene a kid is in feels to me like she was writing it on the fly. She didn't think of it beforehand. She set her ass down on her little laptop, on her little MacBook, and she started writing and she was just waiting for it to come to her and she just thought of those things on the spot and she stuck with them. 
that's just the vibe. Back to Peyton and her, her boyfriend. They escape a cave after getting caught in a cave. Kind of like a little bit um, Tangle-esque. Like, oh my god, we're drowning, we're drowning. And then they she gets saved. No, she, well, I don't remember who saves who, but they make it out. And it's like, oh my god, we, we escaped again. I love you, but I can't say it, but I'm supposed to hate you. I'm so over it, guys. We're almost done. This is like quick for me. Oh my god, girl. Ugh, I'm so good. At this point, Kai also has the great idea to get a chain and chain them together by the foot. So their ankles are now chained together, him and Peyton, and this chain is not taking off for the next 200 pages. They're just chained to one another, nobody really gives a fuck about it, and... They are forced. This is the forced proximity she was talking about. But now they have to pretend. This is a word that also just is mentioned way too many times. It's pretend because they're like, we hate each other, but we kind of want to fuck. So let's just pretend we don't hate each other, but you don't. So you're not pretending. What we're doing? What is going on? Really amazing line by Lauren. And she likes using this one. She goes, emotion flits across her face. What kind? <laughs> Elaborate. Why are you being so unspecific? Emotion. What? Huh? Just tell me what emotion. Uh, say it seems like anger or something, but emotion flits across her face and she uses this line multiple times, by the way. I'm on your shit. We're almost at the end, actually, because there's not much happening from now on. Now that they're chained together, it's genuinely just leading up to them confessing their love to one another. He is committed as ever to get her back to the kingdom, to his brother, and uh, there's a few scenes where they almost get caught by other people or something, but obviously he wants to be the one to return her, especially because Kit wants her back alive, and I think the wanted poster says dead or alive, and Kit said no, 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 alive. At no point are you really afraid for her, and I think this is like a really big issue with this book is that Lauren thinks that she is doing something with it. That she is making us, the reader, excited or scared for characters when we're very evidently not. At no point was I scared f for Peyton of getting caught or separated from Kai or getting hurt. And at this point when they're chained together, they do get hurt like continuously. And it's always the same conversation of like, you're bleeding, let me fix it. Oh my God, your bandage is bleeding. Why didn't you say anything? It's like this conversation genuinely happens three times after this point onward. So it's a little bit insane. He reveals to Peyton that he used to have a little baby sister, but she died because she was sick. And the way he reveals this to her, and I don't want to be weird, but he does, she does ask him like, why do you always kiss my thumb? And then he's like, I kiss your thumb because um, I always used to do that for my little sister and I've never kissed a thumb that wasn't hers. And then he also says, you remind me of her. And it's just like, do you want to fuck your baby sister? Like, what are we doing? Mm, this is not cute. Don't care about the sister. By the way, there is another character called Mac. I don't know who that is. I know he's in Adina's book. He was allegedly Adina's love interest. And you know what? The thing with him is he allegedly, I only heard this because I watched so many videos. He has a silver streak in his hair. As we know, Peyton has silver hair. And so Lauren was asked, does this have any importance? And she was like, no. She didn't even think about that, guys. Don't give her any ideas. Anything that you will comment on her shit she will consider putting in her book, genuinely. Like, the whole thing with Kit being obsessed with Peyton, because in his chapters, he's like, I'm writing a letter to her because I'm obsessed with her, I want to be with her, like, blah, blah, blah. She only got that idea because people were asking her, is it a love triangle? And she didn't even think it was. She didn't even think it was until you guys started saying it. And that's also why I believe that she um, is just kind of, like, hoping for the best. Hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. What song is that? Is that One Direction? After making out in a pool, they read the dad's journal and he reveals that the king has just been killing people so they don't dwindle power and there is no disease, question mark. <laughs> she took her dad's journal with her because in the beginning there was a scene where she was hiding in her own house. After escaping from killing the king, she was hiding in her own house. <laughs> the first place you would go, obviously. And Kai burned it down, but before he burned it down, she could salvage the journal from her dad. In the journal, they're now reading it, like, in the last 50 pages. And the dad reveals, because the dad was a healer, that there was never any disease. Which, who would have thought? Like, this is just, like, a revelation that we all knew. And that the king was just evil and just wanted 
the ordinary's out because he was evil, which is like also we've been new. Like all these revelations are, is it called revelation or? Yes, it's called revelation. So if he, chill. They feel very obvious and they are not exciting because you know you know already and it's the same with the whole build up to the end where kid then says you're gonna marry me and then people are like how could you do this to me lauren like i need the next book right now i can't tell you how that's gonna end right fucking now like i'm jealous i'm jealous of people who can get excited for it genuinely like it's great for you but i wish i could do that because it's like we know how the series is gonna end, she's not gonna do anything crazy. He doesn't want anyone tending to the poor or less powerful for that matter. I wouldn't be surprised if he began another purging, this time for the mundanes. He thinks them to be weak like the ordinaries, is what it says in the journal about the king. I mentioned this in the first video, but what the fuck are you trying to say, Lauren? What do you are you aware of what you're writing? You want to make the king so evil. So evil that he would even kill people unjustified unjustified unjustifiably <laughs> who possess little power because as you remember mundanes have power but they're just in the slums like they're the bitches like that do the dirty work like why do you want the mundanes who do all your work who are like the farmers and shit to be purged and killed like who's gonna do all the work <laughs> you know what i mean makes absolutely zero sense cardboard cut out villain cardboard cut out every other character after this reveal Kid is- no, Kai is like, Oh my god, I've been killing innocent people? Oh no! Men. No thinking skills. None of them actually have any. It's not to blame on him. There are some bandits attacking them because for this whole last part, they're crossing like some sort of territory with bandits in it and none of them showed up, right? And right at this, like right before they are supposed to go back to Ilya, they encounter these bandits. It's a very short scene. Those action scenes are always very short-lived. It's always just them talking. The scenes are always just them talking. She just wants to get it over with. She just wants to get to the next talking scene. She wants no action. Peyton manages to kill all of the bandits with a bow and arrow because apparently these bandits have been bandits since that very morning. Like, they haven't been banditing any longer. They don't know how to bandit. So she just knows. Uh, she just kills them. No problem. KDA going up, as I said. Then she has a nervous breakdown because Kai is injured and she has blood in her hair. And she's like, cut it off, very Tangle-esque. Yet again, we love Tangled. Germany. Cut it off, cut it off. And so she, he cuts off her hair and it's short. And then they start talking like, he's like, I've always had a thing for her girly pops of short hair and she's like well you're in luck today i just got a haircut they keep talking about their injuries over and over again she has this revelation that she is traumatized alas who gives a fuck let's go back to Ilya. you know let's speed this up my last note reads confession blah blah she marries kit the end hire me hire me to write your summaries <laughs> Also, this is on page 665 out of 795 of the ebook, so I don't know what relation that has to the actual book. There is one more bandit who is trying to kill Kai. I don't know what he does, like throws a rock. I don't know what he does. <laughs> and it says, I don't think before stepping in front of the prince I'm supposed to hate. Girl, there's like 50 pages left. Drop the fucking act. I'm so sick and tired. I remember. She steps in front of him. He's, she's supposed to hate him. Kind of like to take the, the arrow. Because it's an arrow, that, not a rock. I'm sorry, I lied. And you know what she does instead of taking the hit? She swipes her bow through the air. And she just gets the arrow out of the air. She just... Uh, Also important to mention, um, or not important to mention, Peyton is adopted. Her dad um, is not her dad. She just showed up on his doorstep one day and he adopted her. Because we kind of got this weird uh, introduction where <laughs> Kit was like, have you never- No, Kai, sorry. Why did she name them all with a K? Honestly, dumbest idea ever. I was like, have you never wondered why you are ordinary and your dad was a healer? And... She was like, no, I never really wondered. Like, it just kind of happened. Biology, bitch. And then in the journal, 
her dad revealed that she was in fact found on his doorstep and that he then took her in and found out she was ordinary but he still loved her because his wife was already dead with their baby in her belly. <sighs> so sad. So I don't know if this has any relation to anything that's gonna happen. And I, quite frankly, I'm not gonna read the last book. Like, I, I always say that, and then I, I kind of feel like I have to because I already read the same book, but I really don't want to. I'll just watch a review. Yes, I support my fellow reviewers. Anyway, let's go back to Ilya. Now, finally, um, they do reveal that they love each other, slash Kai is the only one that says it. He says, I love you. Um, and she says, why won't you fight me? And then he says, oh my god, and this made me go, Ugh. Because the next time I lay a hand on you, I only ever wanted to be in caress. Ick. They get back to Ilya. He kind of has a breakdown himself where he's like, you need to get away before the guards find us. Oh no, the guards have found us. Let's pretend again to hate each other and blah, blah, blah. And then she gets brought in front of Kit. He's going insane. He's like, you are to be my wife. And then we get Kai's perspective at the end as the epilogue. And he says, I'll lose her forever while being forced to watch. Girl, just have an affair. Like, just because she's marrying your brother, the king. You know, we're in a fantasy. People do that all the time. And it's also, like, just so clear that that's just not gonna happen. Like, everyone's gonna get... I don't know what this is supposed to be. <laughs> Everything's gonna work out fine. I genuinely don't know what she wants to do with the last book because this is how the book ends with the proposal. Joke's on you, it doesn't. It says, as the last line, um, she was supposed to be my forever. Now I'll watch her become someone else's. Remember what I said in the beginning? The book from the la the line from the last book? Because the beast doesn't get the beauty. Fuck off. I have the biggest ick. And the line, the last line of the next book, bet your ass is gonna be, the beast got the beauty. I'm scared. It's just so evident that Everything's gonna turn out fine. I don't think she has the ball, even if, like, though she pretends, right? Um, I don't think Lauren has the balls to actually do anything shocking. Because neither was this book. And remember, you have to tell me if this was, like, um, Dance of Thieves or what the fuck it's called. Because I don't know. I didn't read it. I'm happy this is over. Nothing happened in this book. It was generally a waste of time. And I don't know how I talked for so long about it because I don't really know what there was to say about it. You guys let me know if you've read this book and what you thought about it. If you maybe even liked the first book and then read the second book and now are here to join me on the hate. <laughs> even though you didn't want to do it for the first book, you now you realize. There's like nothing in my head. This book was so unsubstantial. Nothing of... <laughs> nothing of substance in it, honestly. And um, I know this sentiment for once is shared by many. So that makes me happy. You finally see the truth, the truth of the Book Hater Club. Join me on my quest to hate, <laughs> to conquer. I hope all my big booty bitches are doing all right. Let me know if you agree that a good king just needs some big booty bitches because honestly, he's lacking some. Maybe that's why he's going crazy. My next video will be a new podcast episode. There's a bunch of topics that I wanna talk about that have been going on. And also, as we know, my arch nemesis, Alex Astor, we have to discuss what she is up to. If you want to vote on my next read and also my series review that I want to do, then consider becoming a member. Thank you again to all of my book haters. Love you guys. I can't do it, sorry. I have to do it like this. I'm sorry, I know, it's not embar- I love talking, but I love you more. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I hope you stay happy, you stay healthy. Peace and love, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.